6.4 is all about the quadratic formula. Um, so, so far we have learned three ways of, well, you will have three after this, three ways of solving quadratics. You can factor, that was 6.1. You can use square roots, that was 6.2. We skipped over 6.3 because you learned that in college algebra. And in 6.4, <clears throat> you learn the quadratic formula. Again, this is the same quadratic formula you learned back in Algebra 1 and reviewed in Algebra 2 and all that stuff. There's nothing new here. So the quadratic formula, here's what it looks like. X equals, this is the opposite of B, so that's important so that you know. This means the opposite, okay? So if your B value is positive, it becomes negative here. If your B value is originally negative, it becomes positive here. Plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Again, you can go out onto uh, YouTube and find a song to Pop Goes the Weasel to help you know this formula. Okay? It's the same formula you worked with back in high school. All right? Now, when I do this formula, again, many of you probably have your own ways of running this, but I run this formula in two steps. I figure the b squared minus 4ac first, which is what we call the discriminant not discriminate, discriminant, okay? And this value, once you get into college algebra, this is gonna help you a lot. This is why I do this first, because once you get into college algebra, depending on what this value is, um, you will either continue or stop with the quadratic formula there. So this is why I don't really kind of do all of the formula at once. I run the discriminant first, because in college algebra, this will lead to a point where you might just stop and you're done, okay? And then I plug in the rest. And again, the other reason why I do the discriminant first, because if something goes wrong, this is the step where it goes wrong at, okay? So if something is amiss when you're going through, this is where it happens, okay? So that's why I deal with this first. So all I got are three problems, and this is all over the quadratic formula. So let's get to it. So right here, we've got 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equal to 0. So the most important thing you need to know about the quadratic formula, it's a lot like factoring. You must equal 0 to use the quadratic formula. If you are not equal to 0, you cannot do the quadratic formula. Okay? Just like in factoring, you have to be equal to 0 to factor. If you are not equal to 0, no factoring. So since this is equal to zero, we're good to go. But if we weren't equal to zero, just like in factoring, we would add and subtract whatever was over here all over to the left side. Make it easy, okay? So those A, Bs, and Cs that you saw in the quadratic formula are the same A, Bs, and Cs that you did with factoring. So our A is three, our B is a negative eight, our C is four. So the first thing I run, just like what I told you, is that b squared minus 4ac. And I run this in three parts. And I promise you, if you think about this as three questions, you're going to be just fine. Because that's where most of you get in trouble, is with this minus and this 4 and all that. This is the part that messes up, and also with the squaring. Okay? So let's talk, let me talk to you about how I run this in three parts. This is the first thing I deal with. I deal with the square, okay? Then the second part I deal with is the 4AC. Notice I didn't say negative 4AC. I said 4AC because once you have those two answers, then that's where the third part comes in, which is where I subtract. So I think of this as figure this number out, figure this number out, and then subtract the two. That's how I deal with the discriminant. And I promise you, if you figure it out like that every single time, you should not have problems with the quadratic formula. Okay? So let's plug in 8. Sorry, B, which is negative 8 squared. Notice I don't take the opposite here. I just plug it in. Negative 8 squared minus 4 my A is 3, my C is 4, okay? 
So using your calculator, negative 8 squared is 64 minus 4 times 3 times 4 is 48. Now, big things real quick. When you go to the calculator, when you put in a negative number and square it, no matter what the calculator says, that number is always positive. Okay? So negative 8 squared is negative 8 times negative 8. A negative times a negative is a positive. If your calculator is kicking out negatives, it's because you did not put this in parentheses. Let me show you. Parenthesis, negative 8, parenthesis, squared. This is how you should be putting that in. C, positive 64. But if I didn't put the parenthesis in, it's going to give me negative 64. Because what your calculator is doing, it is squaring the 8 and then taking it times a negative 1. And that's not what we want to happen. Okay? Your calculator doesn't think that this negative is with that 8. It only thinks the negative is with the 8 when it's in parentheses. So put the number in parentheses when you use your calculator. So now all we have to do is subtract those two. 64 minus 48 gives you 16. And now you know the discriminant. Okay? In college algebra, just so you know, this is a good thing. As long as our discriminant is positive, you would continue on in college algebra. Okay? If this number ended up being negative in college algebra, you would stop. Okay? You wouldn't keep going. You would stop where you're at. Because in college algebra, we only care about real values. But since we are an intermediate, if this would have ended up negative, we would still have to continue on because we know about complex numbers. Okay, so no matter what, in intermediate algebra, no matter what this number becomes, you have to continue on through all of it. All right, so now we're on step two, which says plug in the rest. My screen's moving up on me. So let's plug in the rest. So X equals, I need the opposite of B. So what's the opposite of a negative 8? A positive 8. Plus or minus square root. Well, we know what this number is. That's the 16. All over 2 times A, which is 3. See how much simpler that is to plug in? And there's not a lot of stuff that we have to deal with here. Okay? So let's do some reducing because we know some things. We can do some multiplying. And we can figure out the square root of 16. So here we've got 8 plus or minus, what's the square root of 16? 4. All over what's 2 times 3? 6. So we can actually still continue on because we can actually figure these answers out. Remember how we talked about this in 6.2? How that there are two versions of this answer. One where there's a positive and one where there's a negative. So you actually need to figure those two answers out. One where it's 8 plus 4 all over 6. And one where it is 8 minus 4 all over 6. <clears throat> so what is 8 plus 4? Well, that's 12 over 6. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. So one of our answers is 2. Okay? What's 8 minus 4? Well, that is 4 all over 6. And then 4 over 6 is equal to 2 thirds. So they do want you to reduce the fraction. No decimals. Cool thing about the quadratic formula um, is that it works 100%. A quadratic formula will solve any quadratic 100% and give you the exact answer. Factoring, it has its limitations. The same thing as the square root method. It has its limitations. Factoring only works if the quadratic is factorable. If the quadratic's not factorable, you can't use the quad you can't factor it then.
The same thing with using uh, the square roots. Um, the square roots only works if you have an x squared. Nothing else. No bx. Okay? So the square root method only works with equations that have just an x squared with nothing else. Okay? No other variables. Quadratic formula works 100%. So I want to show you these next two problems. Go ahead and pause the video. Give them a shot. Go. Okay. So let's jump back into this guy. And here we go. So we are equal to zero, so that's a good thing. So we should know what A, which is two. We should know B, which is eight. We should know C, which is seven. So again, I run that B squared minus four AC. So my B is eight squared minus four times my A is two. My C is seven. All right. So 8 squared, as we know, is 64 minus, well, 4 times 2 times 7 is 56. What is 64 minus 56? And we get 8. So now I fill in the rest. X equals opposite of B. What's the opposite of a positive 8 and negative 8? plus or minus, we know what the next guy is, it's the square root of eight, all over two times a, which is two. So if we start looking at this, doing some simplifying, negative eight plus or minus, well that doesn't simplify this time, like what we had last time, square root of 16 was four, but the square root of eight, that's a decimal in our calculator, but we do know what two times two is, and that's four. So now let's talk about what you're going to have to do from here. So whenever your radical doesn't reduce, hopefully this seems familiar to you, like what we did when we had, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> like what we did when we had uh, rationalizing the denominator from section 5.4 in our previous module. We need to reduce the radical and then reduce the numbers out front. Okay, so that's all you do for the remainder of this. So hopefully you already know that the square root of 8 reduces to 2 square roots of 2. Because again, good child, bad child. Good child is the square root of 4. Bad child is the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 2 stays inside. So this 2 square root of 2 is going to replace 8. So negative 8 plus or minus 2 square roots of 2 all over 4. See how we reduce the radical. Now look at your numbers. Negative 8, 2, and 4. Is there a number that divides all of those? Kind of like a GCF. Is there a number that divides 8, 2, and 4? Absolutely. 2 divides all these guys. So we divide them all by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. Square root of 2 stays. Don't touch the square root. You leave it alone. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that's the answer. Of course, they'll want you to separate it out like what we've seen before. So one of your answers would be negative 4 plus square root of 2 all over 2. And you could put the one in front there if you want, but you don't have to. And the other one will be negative 4 minus the square root of 2 all over 2. <clears throat> this would be your smaller answer, as we kind of talked about in um, 6.2 when we were talking about square, uh, the square root method and things like that. See, this looks a lot like the square root method when you get to right here. Okay, It's all just review of that. So there are the two answers, because I believe they'll want you to write them out and separate them with a comma. So there you go. All right, again, hopefully you pause that video. If not, pause it now. Give this a shot.
Okay. So going through, A is 4, B is 1, C is 1. So running b squared minus 4ac, my b is 1, so we're going to square that, minus 4 times 4 times 1, because c is 1. So 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times 4 times 1 is 16, and if I subtract this, I get negative 15. Now, if we were in college algebra, we would stop here, and we would say that there are no real solutions. Because what's going to happen is this is going to create complex numbers for us. And again, as I already said before, since we are in intermediate algebra, you keep going. Because you can keep going because you know about complex numbers. So x equals, what's the opposite of a positive 1? Negative 1. Plus or minus square root of negative 15 all over 2 times a, which is 4. So square root of 15, there really is no reducing there because it's not a perfect square. So we'll leave the radical alone. But on the bottom, 2 times 4 is 8. Now, we're going to treat it just like what we did last time. Let's see if we can simplify the radical. So can the radical break down any? Yes and no. Because we have that negative 15, remember that a negative number in the radical, I pops out. This is why it's a complex answer. And the square root of 15 stays. So this I square root of 15 is going to replace that square root of negative 15. Okay? So X is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 15 all over 8. So now look at your numbers out front. You got negative 1. There is a 1 here. If you want to write it in, you can't, but you don't have to. So negative 1, 1, and 8. Is there a number that divides all of them? It's 1, but that's not going to change anything. So this right there is actually the end answer because there's no reducing of the numbers like what we had last time. So if we wrote out our two answers, sorry, it moved up on me. So x equals negative 1 plus i square roots of 15 all over 8. And remember how I told you that we could actually separate this out and make this standard form? Just by making it its two fractions, negative one eighth plus one eighth i square roots of 15. So there's the standard form of the complex number. The other answer would be negative one minus i square roots of 15 all over 8. And it will look just like this answer, except instead of the plus, it'll be a minus in the middle. So you have negative 1 eighth minus 1 eighth i square roots of 15. And that's what this section is like. You're just running the quadratic formula. You must be equal to 0 to run the quadratic formula. Okay? <clears throat> and there you go. Enjoy.